I mean, in my personal opinion, there is not one person greater than another in this club. That's one thing that, that get, makes me love this club even more is we're not out there trying to beat, beat, beat people over the head with Bibles. We're there for each other. And, and somebody once told me that a man's first ministry is, is in his own home. Well, I, I believe that 100% true with this club as well. If we can't minister to each other, how are we going to minister to anybody else when they need it? I'm not saying if somebody won't don't if somebody comes up to me and starts talking to me about God, I'm not going to sit there and talk to them. I will in a heartbeat. But I'm not going to go to an event, set up a little booth, and hand out flyers and stuff like that. I'll go walk around and if they see my backpacks, they'll know and they'll if they want to talk, they'll talk. If they don't, they won't. It's that simple. Now, uh, what I love about this club is we're, our ministry lies within. In order for us to one day share what share the gospel with other people we first have to learn it ourselves and and i think with us with our ministry being within our own ranks that that's one of the biggest things that we have going for us is because we have so many different people from so many different backgrounds with so many different testimonies and we can all learn from each other and it'll help us be better Christians later if it's not already helping now. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I seen somewhere, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the members I used to have in the past had a plaque on the wall. It said, the best sermon you'll ever hear, the best sermon you'll ever hear does not come from a pulpit. It comes from the life you live. Amen. And in, in other words, man, you got to let your actions speak. Because I could tell you I got a million dollars in the bank, but you ain't going to believe me till I show you, right? Exactly. I can tell you I'm a Christian and I'm, I'm walking with God, but you're not going to believe me if I'm out doing all this other BS. Right. So... That's one thing about us. We keep each other accountable and we make sure that if we do step out of line, we're corrected. I call it corrective criticism. I call it a tune up. <laughs> Sometimes you, I you know, the wheels get out of alignment. You got to get them, you got to get them realigned. You know, it happens. Yeah. In all honesty, it's sore muscles at the end of it. Right. Right. But it's a great so, thing, man. Being a member of this club has been one of the best things that has happened to me in my life. It has kept me yeah. from slipping back into the old ways. And, you know, yeah. building brotherhood with all these other brothers across the country. So when people say... Yeah, you give up some freedom being in a club and all that. That's I absolutely agree with that. But then what do you yeah. gain being in this club? Yeah, I, I, I would I would give up a little bit of freedom for a family in the end of the week. And I'm, I'm kind of shying away from brotherhood for this conversation on purpose. Because to me, we are a brotherhood, but we're more than that. We're a family. 
Amen. I mean, everybody claims to have brotherhood, but how many show family? Familia por vida, right? Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Sometimes, you know, we in our club we look to avoid politicking against one another. We look to to always build each other up. We discipline when it ne- when it's necessary, but it's all love, man. And it's all about yeah. bettering the club, bettering the whole family. It ain't about, you know, this guy or that guy, you know? Yeah. I mean, in my personal opinion, there is not one person greater than another in this club. Right? We got some titles that maybe have hierarchy, but everybody is a, is a yeah. member, man. Everybody has a say. Everybody, you know, is subject to the same rules, same consequences. You know, it is what it is. Everybody has the ability to have their vote passed or failed. Just, just, just because you're one of the higher in the hierarchy doesn't mean your your vote's automatically going to go through. Yeah, I speak from experience on that one. <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm like, this is what I want. And nope. Yeah. Yeah, nah, it, it, Honestly, but that's a good it, thing, though, you know? Yeah. I mean, if, if everybody in this club got what they want, would it really be a club anymore? No. It needs to be that, that check, that balance, that, you know... It's gotta be. It's gotta be a club decision because it's family, man. It affects us all. Whatever happens, yeah. wh- what I do affects everybody else, and you gotta realize that, you know. And and what happens in one part of the country, just because it's over there, doesn't mean it doesn't affect me here or affect you there. So when it comes to the way we do things and handle things. All of us have to be on the same page to stop the creation of bigger problems down the road. Right. And I see like, you know, when I look out across the motorcycle world, the MC world, I see where that doesn't always seem to be going on. I see conflicts between two clubs over there and then over here, the same two clubs are cool, super cool, you know. And it's like, yeah, you're you. These two guys over here have been getting along really well, and then somebody starts something over there. And now these two guys over here got a beef based on what this knucklehead over here did. You don't want that, yeah. yeah. You know. No, if one of us have beef, we all have beef. Right. If one of us is blessed, we're all blessed. And, and I think that's how it should be. I mean, if, if somebody comes up and blesses you with a million dollars, I'm not financially blessed, but I'm blessed because I know you're taken care of. You know what I mean? I accept that part of the blessing. And if you got to be, well, you know I'm going to be there. Amen. So, I mean... I don't, I really don't understand how some of these clubs are still making it when they beeping that much within themselves. Yeah, I don't know. When you fight amongst yourselves, I, yeah, I can't see how you can do it. How can you, how all, can you have, how can you be fighting each other for the enemy to stay come strong? In. Right. I mean, if you don't have a united front, then what are you there for? Yeah, absolutely. And I always say this. I always go back to what I heard this old Hessian say, man. And I have a lot of respect for the the Hessians. And this old Hessian said he would rather their club folded up than to weaken what they stand for, to... You yeah. know, so all the stuff that's going on now, 
in the MC world, you know, is crazy because that's not what the, the guys who created all these clubs did not create them for this purpose. You know, these clubs didn't come into being to be fighting within themselves, you know. And Forgotten right. Few... lost your video. There you go. Forgotten Few is definitely not about fighting within ourselves, you know. No. That, that's a... That's a mighty big no no. <laughs> that is not that is absolutely and, not tolerated. That is and, that and is it's big squashed ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time before it ever gets off the ground. Does that mean we never get heated? Absolutely not. It, it happens. But it never it's never got to a point where brothers are throwing blows at each other or charters are beefing against each other or nothing like that because we no. we stop it at Man. the table and that's it that's the beef is over yeah you know I, I don't I don't think we can survive as long as we have if we allowed it Man, when you think back of the early days of this club and the stuff those brothers went through and the things they had to deal with you can see how that that bond was forged and when it was betrayed the the that the outcome of that betrayal nearly killed the club and yeah you know so we make an extra special effort never to have that kind of thing happen again exactly you know and it is about familiar, brother. All about familiar. Yes. You're forgotten uh, I, few or I you're not. Say, There's uh, no forgotten few this place, forgotten few that place. No, it's all it's just yes. forgotten few, period. Yes. The only reason I have the state that I live in on when I introduce myself is so people know where I'm at. It has nothing to do with this part of the forgotten few does things this way this part of the forgotten few does things the same way the rest of the forgotten few does right we're supposed to all be doing the exact same thing it's like a mcdonald's franchise in a way you know you go to mcdonald's in miami yeah. you want the same quarter pounder that you're gonna get in seattle bro you don't want their special yeah. quarter pounder over here and and you get over here and it's a totally different thing no it's the same sandwich wherever you go and that's yep. the way the forgotten few is. It's the same forgotten few no matter where you go. Exactly. Are you trying to say I'm a cheeseburger, brother? <laughs> I'm just saying you're tasty, brother. You're pretty tasty. I know. <laughs> <laughs>